Hey everyone, welcome back to Marketing 100, where Kale and I are on a mission to share 100 snackable tactics that you can take and implement in your business to grow your salon or spa. And this week is no different. We're covering a subject that is really easy. John, this one's so easy. Like, I this like is easy. So, like this is so easy. It's so I love easy, easy and people don't do Everything it. is so hard these days. I love easy. Always tell your clients what you're using on them when you're using it on them. While they're in your chair, let's talk about retail. Retail accounts for the largest profit margin in your salon, hands down, right? Like we're looking at a margin of sometimes 50% or more on products. That should be at the core of everything. Your margin on products is going to be way higher than it is on labor. When you're looking at how to affect, you know, the profit in your business, there's only so much that you can do in terms of like reducing service time and be becoming more efficient with that. But when it comes to product sales, it requires essentially zero extra time. It's something you can do during the service. You are essentially talking about that product so that it gets it into the client's mind. You are telling them how you're using it so that they're educated on you know what it does. And then you're telling them why you're using it so that they understand the benefit, the value that that product brings that they would not have had without it. Whether that's a heat protectant or a styling product or anything that you're using, there's a reason why you're using it. There's a reason why you're recommending it. And it's something that they should probably consider taking home with them. This is step one. They should never hear about products for the first time when they get up to the front desk, because if you just hand them a basket full of products and say, you need this, they're not gonna understand why it's important. But if you start when they're in the chair, then they, they can see it in real time. They see what their hair starts as and ends as, and they can understand why that's so important. This goes back to what we talked about on a previous episode when we talked about like the secret sauce for add-on services, right? The, the secret there was essentially how to maximize your average ticket, right? So reducing the amount of time it takes to make more money. If you haven't seen that episode, we'll link that one in the description. You can go check that out. There's a lot of takeaways from that. The best add-on services are the ones that add the most amount to the ticket and cost your stylist and you the least amount of time in labor. But it's the same when it comes to what we're talking about here with selling products. It doesn't cost you extra time to recommend products, especially if you do it right. It's still like pulling teeth trying to get stylists to sell. It, it blows my mind how hard it is to get them to do this. How many times, John, and I, I know that you've seen this before, too. How many times have you heard a stylist say, you know, but I'm not a salesperson? And you know what? I think it's rude for a stylist to kind of assume that they shouldn't be offering a product. They're there with you. You're their hair doctor or, you know, whatever the services that you provide. You're the expert. They want that as part of their service. They want that recommendation. They are expecting that, right? Anything else is just like rude to assume that someone cannot afford a product or whatever, like whatever they're making up, right? So I think this is a mindset game, a big mindset game that you as the business owner need to take on you to like create that shift in your business, that people understand that they are experts, that they've been trained, that you've invested in them to be those experts. It's not even about selling uh, and no one should assume what someone else is able to afford or able to do. They should deliver that service. That's what they do as experts. Clients want you to tell them what they should do with their hair. Part of what they're coming to you for is your expertise. I can't tell you how many clients are clueless with their hair. They don't know what they're doing. And, and I mean, like, I can't tell you how many clients I had who came in who don't even wash or blow dry their own hair. Like I had a lot of, you know, wealthier clients who the, the only time they washed or styled their hair was when they came in. They would come in every week like clockwork and get a blowout. And that was the only time anyone ever touched their hair, including themselves. This is why I talk about being a hair doctor, right? I've brought it up on previous episodes. It's crucially important that, that stylists think of themselves in this way, because the reason why we go to our doctor is because we can't fix our own ailments. And when it comes to our hair, it's exactly the same. So if they're coming to you for styling, if they're coming to you for color, if they're coming to you for cuts, they're coming because they can't do that themselves and they're coming because they trust you to be able to do that. And part of that service that you're providing is being able to use the products and recommend the products that will help them do that when they're not in your chair. Your number one job as a salon business is to make sure that your clients look good all the time because they are a walking billboard for your business. That is what word of mouth marketing is. That should be your goal. Part of your job is to ensure that that work continues to look good until they come back to you, right? They are going to be the best advertisement you could possibly ever have for your business. You want them to look so good that people cannot help but come up to them in public and say, who does your hair? You look amazing. 
right? These are all important things. And if they don't know what products to use or how to style their hair, then that's not gonna be the case. They should know why you're blow drying a certain way. They should know why you're round brushing a certain way. They should know why you used a particular finishing product on them because maybe it gives you a little more of a bouncy hold. Like all these things should be established. The value of each of these products should be established ahead of time. And when they come up to the front, you can have those products ready to go and be like, here's a hairspray. I love how it turned out on you. You should definitely use this. Also, make sure you get this heat protected so you don't your ends don't split and become a problem in the future. Whatever that is, you're following up at the front desk. You're not starting the conversation there. You need to be recommending starting from the time that they're in the chair. If this is not part of your salon culture or your education culture as it is right now, you need to start today. This needs to be something that you implement as quickly as possible. Build that regimen into your routine. Make it a part of your salon culture. It's not going away. It's going to be the biggest lever that you can have in affecting your profit margin. If you're not doing it, it's time to do it. I don't want you to leave today and be like, okay, I just need to tell my team that they should be talking about the products they use. That's not the full message, right? Mm -hmm. And this is something that you need to own as a business owner, making sure that they feel as the expert, that they actually have the knowledge. Because if you like really drill into that and making sure they're properly trained on these products, exactly what they do, for who, I mean, you need to invest time here, right? So that they really build that mastery. They actually sit on information that they understand in that conversation is valuable for that hair type or those nails or whatever the business is. You as the business owner have 100% of the accountability here. And we cannot just leave here and go say, oh, you need to talk about the products. No, like you need to make sure they are equipped and they feel proud and confident to talk about and that they know they are adding value. There's a difference between a manager and a leader. And somebody who just manages and says, oh, I need you to talk about the products in the chair, that's not going to make anybody feel empowered to do it. Your job as an owner, as a manager, is to empower people to be that leader. And so it's about equipping them with those that confidence and those skills that they need to do it well. We talk about culture a lot. That shows through so much. And it makes a difference in the client experience too. Build your staff up. Build your stylists up. Empower them to be the leaders that they can be in the future. Empower them to be the hair doctors that they need to be to recommend things. They should feel like they are providing a service and not that they're being made to sell. Thank you for tuning in to Marketing 100 this week with me and Kale, where we share snackable tactics every week to help you grow your salon business. Educating your clients is one key component of this. And I hope that what you got today is something that you can take with you and that there's some key insights here. So let us know in the comments what you're doing today in order to get more retail, to drive more retail through your team. How are you getting them to educate and to work with their client for that to happen? We'd love to hear. And we look forward to seeing you inside of an upcoming video.